you. I am wonderful. I am wonderful. So you can go ahead and take it away. Well, um, see, I'm not. I think I will say, you know, kudos to all the other people who've um, come on because I'm not really good in like just giving speeches and talking about myself. Um, and as you can hear, my voice, you know, is still a bit on the raspy side. The cold as we we have and it's not really being favorable on me. But um, yeah, so I don't think my show is the number one in the world. Uh, far from being number one in the world, but I hope someday in the future I'll be able to say that we are number one, but we're not there yet. Yes, the number one literary. I'm sorry, I misspoke. But um, I have a question for you. As we can see, you have a little human, and how do you balance having a little human and doing a podcast and being a writer? Lack of sleep. So when everybody else is sleeping, I'm up in the middle of the night um, just doing work um, and just getting on with it because I think you need to be motivated to want to do something. And if you have a passion for something, that's literally what keeps you going. Whereas if you're not, if you're doing something you don't like or you don't love, then you're going to struggle because then it becomes a chore. Whereas if you do, you're doing something that you do like and... Um, I always find this amazing, but at December 2015, I didn't even know what a podcast was. And, you know, January, when I sort of started reading and I heard about it, I was like, you know what, I actually think I can do this. And, you know, when I started, you know, I actually got to really not just like it, but I actually love doing podcasting. And, you know, just because I enjoy doing it, that's kind of like what motivates me to give up my sleep time and just get on and do my, you know, prep and stuff like that so it's about having a passion or having a love for whatever it is that you're doing and that kind of helps you to get on irrespective you can almost you can almost materialize time when you need to do something or when you want to do something if you don't really want to do it then you know you'll find excuses not to very very interesting and what would you say to women out there that are now maybe in your situation where they have their children, they, they want to write, they want to have a podcast, they want to do what you're doing, but they just can't figure out the time or the headspace. What, what really good things would you share with them? You see now for me, right? So you know this thing where people, some people will say, the cup is half full, the cup is full or half empty. See for me, the cup is full, right? So it's half full with whatever else and then half full with air, but it's still full. We're not talking about, we're not defining, oh, it's half empty with this, or it's half, it's for me, the cup is full. So when you want to do something, don't, don't even think about it. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was saying that, you know, at December 2015, I didn't even know what a podcast was. And, you know, when I then read up about it, I thought, you know what, I could do this. No, I didn't know how I was to do it. I just started, right? Because that's how you learn. You don't wait till your perfection, right? You know, all the people who, you know, the airplane wasn't invent, you know, invented to become perfect thing. You know, there were lots of errors in the way, lots of, you know, accidents. And so if you just start and just keep doing, you're going to make mistakes guaranteed 1000%. But it's about, well, you've done it, you've seen the mistakes, you learn from your mistakes, you ask yourself, what can I do better? How can I be better? And then take that and improve. But if you're waiting to just be magically perfect, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you put that, how you can't always wait to be magically perfect. And I think a lot of women today, we just think that we have to be so perfect to be able to put our message out there. How do you get into that headspace to know that, you know what, I don't have to be perfect. I just need to be the best me or the or better, not a better me, but just put my best foot out there. So How to be the best version headspace? of yourself, the, to be the best version of yourself. See, the way I look at it, and this is, you know, this might be right, this might be wrong, but for me, I always ask myself, compare to me yesterday and me today, what's the difference? So when I did, so for me, 2015 December was a really, it was a turning point because I know that at that point I hadn't heard of a podcast, but then in January, I heard of a podcast and I just got it planned. So the, so the difference to me, right, is 
that compared to in January 2016, in January and December 2015, how I had improved was that I hadn't heard of something, but I went to, to do something about it. So compare yourself with who you were the day before, or the month before, or the year before. Are you making progress? Are you where you were X amount of time before? You know, so if you can actually see that you've taken one step, you know, because they say like, what is it? Drops of one, is it, or drops of water make an ocean. So it's kind of like when you just take that first step, then you know that you're not where you were the day before. But if you don't take that first step, you're exactly where you were before and you've not made progress. You know, so even if it's a thing of, okay, well, I want to do this. And today I'm just going to write an outline, right? Or I'm going to do something. Well, that's one place you were to, you are in today that you were not in yesterday. So, you know, that's just... Uh, like Hi, Shagilala. I, I, I really love your show. I love your podcast. Um, as an author, I've, I've gotten so much. Uh, my question for you this morning is, if you could give, if you could give advice to, in, you know, a brand new author, a brand new indie author, what... So you need to be prepared to do, you know, put in the hard work. So that, I think that would be the number one thing, because again, I think a lot of authors and me included at the time, you just think that when you press publish, you're magically, you know, you magically just have millions. And I think this, everyone's going to be buying your books. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. So the easiest thing you can do, and I wish someone had told me, um, is, you know, writing your book and publishing it. But the hard work comes from everything else. I think the way I'd approached my books would have been, I would have done it completely different at the beginning, but obviously you learn. Um, and also you need to have a really thick skin. So whilst your book is like your baby and, you know, it's like when you're being, you know, when you start writing your book, it's like being pregnant. And then when you publish your book, then, you know, you've delivered your baby. And then someone comes and says, your baby's ugly. You want to get offended. You're like, how dare you call my child ugly, right? So you need to have a thick skin that, you know, even though your book is precious to you, not everybody is going to like it. Like the way you might see it, it might not come across, you know, that way for everybody. And so, you know, not everybody's going to like everything. So the key is, you know, when people give in, you know, <clears throat> feedback is for you to analyze the feedback and see if there was anything constructive, you know, from it. And don't worry too much about what you've already put out there because if you spend so much time trying to get that one work perfect, it's never going to be perfect because again, everybody has different mm -hmm. ideas of um, perfection. So it's about, okay, when you're doing the next work, because you gotta do the next one, right? And then you're gonna think, okay, well, what did I learn from? Because this is what I say, how do you, do you look back at what you've done and think, well, how can I be better than I was yesterday? So when you're doing your next book, do you say, okay, well, what did I learn from my first book? What can I do differently? How can I make it better? You know, that's the sort of thing I would say. Right. So you really do have to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> I don't know if that's a real <laughs> word or not, but it should be. Well, yeah, well, it was created <laughs> here at the Inspirational Women in Literature Conference. It was created here. Entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah. You have time for one you more question. You have to wear question. a lot of hats. We have time for one more question. Okay. Okay. Any, um, so you guys can unmute yourself and ask one question. <laughs> Any questions from the audience? Any questions from the audience? Gosh, I'm feeling quite unloved now. Well, it, it, it's, it's interesting um, because the, the publishing landscape has just been completely turned upside down and shaken because of you know the, the rise of, of independent publishing which is an amazing thing it's a wonderful thing um so do you see what you know you speak to so many writers do you see anything on the on the horizon as far as you know another revolution or even evolution in in writing um writing on different platforms uh crowdfunding crowd sharing what is what is the next turn in the road for indie publishing to be honest i think it's probably going to be down with technology and how technology is being developed um you know so i've been doing this you know just a little over a year um and i know that i've seen a lot of changes in terms of technology and one of the things that i i'm suspecting this is only a suspicion i am not you know i'm not a technology person but there are now building some apps that are meant to go viral 
and it's meant to change the way in which authors um, promote their stuff. But I guess not just authors, businesses. So people, you know, because the whole thing about, you know, oh, this um, video went viral and that went viral. So they're trying to build apps that would potentially do that. So for instance, um, one of the ones that I saw, and I was going to, <clears throat> I was going to um, try it out, but the customer service for the um, company weren't that good. Like I sent an email and I didn't get a reply. So I didn't feel it was worth um, trying out. But I think, you know, as time progresses, you'll probably see more of them. So basically the idea behind it is that when you're running competitions, you might say to someone, okay, well, if you introduce your friends and get them to sign up to my mailing list, you know, the top three people, because again, you know, human beings are competitive, right? I want to be better. I want to be number one. I want to reach that. So it was the idea of one of the ones that I've seen is that, oh, if you have the, so it's kind of like a race and who introduces or who signs up the most people to the mailing list, you might give them like a hundred pounds Amazon gift card. I mean, who wouldn't want a hundred pound Amazon gift card? I mean, I know I would. So the competition there and how you can then get your competition to then go viral by these apps is that, you know, people will then be able to track the race. Okay, well, I've invited 100 people and, oh, person B has invited 50 people. And person B is like, how dare that person, you know, I'm going to look for another 100 people to make mine 150. And, you know, human beings' competitive nature just comes there. And that's, you know, so that's something that I see, you know, so you can imagine for a newbie author and you're saying to people, well, send people up to my mailing list, you know, and I will give you a hundred pound Amazon gift card and you, know, and you could literally become, you know, a bestseller just that way. Thank you so much, Shagola, for showing up and the little human also being, <laughs> for being adorable as always. And we thank you so much and thank you so much for being inspiring. We are going to go now to 